America's history is riddled with horrifying stories of political extremism, which have inspired intense bigotry and even violence. This is especially true of Indiana during the 1920s, when one of the most notorious extremist groups took over civic life, the Ku Klux Klan. In this episode of From the Vault, we look at one of the most controversial items in the archives collection, one that powerfully symbolizes the period and its dark politics, the Evansville Ku Klux Klan Charter. The Klan first emerged in Reconstruction-era Tennessee and quickly spread throughout the South. They terrorized recently freed African Americans, as well as their Republican allies, with violence, threats, and intimidation. They described themselves as the Invisible Empire of the South. Thousands of people died from their acts. Throughout the late 1860s and 1870s, Congress passed a slew of laws to suppress the Klan, and they worked. The Klan fell apart as an organization by the 1880s. But that was the first wave of the Klan. The second wave, which occurred throughout the first half of the 20th century, became nationally significant and politically powerful. This wave was emboldened by D.W. Griffith's landmark 1915 film, The Birth of a Nation, which displayed the Klan as the protector of American democracy. As a result, a resurgence of the Klan began in the 1920s. Indiana's Klan started in Evansville around 1920, and by 1923, chapters held massive rallies around the state. By 1925, the Klan had a quarter of a million members in Indiana and published its own newspaper, The Fiery Cross. They were motivated by an intense bigotry against not only African Americans, who represented less than 3% of Indiana's population, but against Catholics, Jews, and immigrants. Of these, Catholics became a central focus. As historian James Madison noted, quote, the Fiery Cross published a list of Roman Catholic businessmen in Indianapolis, all presumably unworthy of Klan patronage, unquote. This is the Evansville, Indiana Ku Klux Klan Charter. The charter was signed on March 14, 1922, by the leadership of the Evansville chapter of the Klan. The archives acquired this item from Bowling Green State University in Ohio. The man whose name appears in the bottom left-hand corner of the charter under the title of Exalted Cyclops is David Curtis D.C. Stevenson, a man of immense power and influence within the Klan and Indiana politics. He broke away from national leadership in 1923 and started running his Indiana faction of the Klan like a political machine, with him as the all-powerful boss. His leadership and successful infiltration of Indiana politics led to the 1924 elections of a Klan-backed governor, Ed Jackson, a pro-Klan legislature, and even the mayor of the capital city. Once they came to power, they methodically worked to pass measures that persecuted Catholics, particularly their parochial schools. These included mandatory readings of the King James Bible in schools, discrimination against privately educated teachers seeking a teaching license, uniform textbook standards for both public and private schools, and a very controversial attempt to ban religious garb in the public schools. Fortunately, those who opposed the Klan grew wise to their antics and defeated these proposals, citing the importance of individual freedom or of separation of church and state. the Klan's political grip on Indiana quickly began to loosen, mostly as a result of poor organizational strategy and the conviction of D.C. Stevenson for the murder of Madge Oberholzer, a government employee he assaulted, raped, and kept from medical assistance in March of 1925. Governor Jackson was later exposed for corruption by the Indianapolis Times, who reported his illegal financial dealings with Stevenson and the Indiana Klan. The Times won the 1928 Pulitzer Prize for their investigations into Stevenson, Jackson, and the Klan. By the end of the decade, the Klan was all but eliminated from Indiana state government. The Ku Klux Klan Charter and the history that surrounds it remind us of an important lesson. 
In our past, extremist, bigoted organizations have used their power to harm the liberty and dignity of all people in our state. This history isn't pleasant, but it provides us with the knowledge to be better citizens and to recognize discrimination and extremism in all its forms. Thanks for watching. Please click like if you enjoyed this video and make sure to hit that subscribe button to keep updated on all new videos. Finally, what do you think we can do as citizens to challenge harmful extremism in our state? Leave your answers in the comments below. We want to hear from you.